Welcome to the Brass Hand Woodwind Shop. I have a lead pipe that I need to solder onto a tuba, so I will show you how to do that. If you are a beginner at soldering on musical instruments, look in the description below for links to related videos about soldering. When you solder, you need a clean surface to work with. There are several ways of cleaning up solder joints so that you can work with them. One way is sandpaper. You can sand off all the oxidized stuff. If the metal is shiny, then the solder will stick to it. If it has a dull gray color or a dull brown color, solder will not stick to it. So you want a sh more of a shiny color. And also I'm being careful not to get any of the lacquer. I only want where I'm going to solder to get touched with the sandpaper. Okay. That's good. And usually there are three solder joints on lead pipes. Sometimes there are more, but usually there are three. Usually there's one brace that holds the bell to the receiver, and then one contact solder joint straight from the bell to the lead pipe. And there's one more that connects the lead pipe to the valve section. Another way of cleaning up the solder is to heat and wipe using a rag. And you clean up the old solder, the top layer of the old solder, and then you have a fresh layer underneath sometimes. Not always, but if after you're done doing this method, if there is some of that dull gray color, then you still need to sand it down anyway. You can also use a triangular knife to help clean things up. And this is good for fine areas where you need to get right on a certain spot and you don't want to get too far and mess up the lacquer. And again, you only want to use this underneath where the solder joint is going to be. You do not want to scrape up the lacquer with this. This also works well for the inside of tubing. You can also use sandpaper to clean inside of tubing. You also have to clean the solder off of the lead pipe. So if you have three solder joints, there are six solder joints that you need to clean up. One more way to clean up solder joints is to buff them. Then you take the lead pipe and put it back on and you try to line everything up. However, whenever you take a lead pipe off and put it back on, nothing ever lines up like it should. On the belt receiver brace, there's a huge gap at the bottom right there. So I'm going to have to bend the brace. I could bend the lead pipe too, but I'd rather not do that because you can do a lot of damage when you bend lead pipes. So I'm going to bend the brace up this way and that should fill in that gap. I'm going to take my parallel pliers and bend that a little bit. I'm going to try to rotate it around this point. Uh, let's see. It looks like it might be a little bit better. I bent the flange a little bit, so I'm going to have to straighten that out. But that's not going to be that hard to do. Other than that, it looks like it touches everywhere. So I'm going to take the flange burnisher and push that back into place there. I bent the flange back so that it meets the receiver now, so that's good. Because some of the solder joints moved a little bit, I'm going to look and make sure that there's clean metal to clean metal. Because if things shift a little bit, you might end up with metal onto lacquer, and metal does not solder to lacquer, so I'm going to make sure that this is... So I'm going to make sure that everything lines up and there's metal to metal, and this one is good. Uh, the contact solder joint is also good. And I think the lead pipe goes in a little bit farther than it did before. So I have a poker, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark that. And then I will need to take off some lacquer. You can see right there where I marked it. So I'm going to take off a little bit more of the lacquer on the end of the lead pipe. I'm going to remove just a little bit of lacquer. And that way the solder will have something to stick to. I'm going to put the lead pipe back on there. And I'm going to put a little solder clamp onto the lead pipe to hold everything together. Okay, and I'm going to check it out one more time to make sure that the solder is going to stick. I think it's good. So now I'm ready to solder it. I'm going to heat up the solder joint a little bit, then add some flux, and it is in a valve oil bottle, but this is flux. 
I put some tape on it that says flux on it so I do not get the two mixed up. So I'm going to heat that up to temperature and then the solder should flow in there, which it is. Okay, so that solder joint is done. Now I'm going to do this solder joint. And this one's going to take a little bit longer to heat up because there is a lot of mass on there. And the more metal you have, the longer it takes to heat up. Okay, the solder is flowing in. And you want to use as little of heat as possible. Then I'll make sure it gets the other side. A gap did open up on the other side. I'm going to turn the tuba for you so that you can see that. I got some solder onto there, but I did notice that there was a little bit of gap that opened up. So what I'm going to do is I stopped soldering. I'm going to push this in with a flange burnisher, and that will help eliminate the gap. You want as little gap as possible when you're soldering. Now that I got rid of the gap, I'm going to finish soldering that joint. So I'll put a little bit more flux on there. Then I'll finish soldering this joint. Uh, okay, I could tell it got up to temperature because the solder flowed right into there as soon as it got up to 450 degrees. Okay, there we go. I got two out of the three solder joints done. Now I just have this one left. And again, I'm going to heat it up, put some flux on it, and then heat it up a little bit more. And as soon as it's up to temperature, the stutter will start to flow. There it goes. And I need to make sure that the stutter goes all the way around. On this joint, I'm soldering tubing together. And if it leaks, then there will be a problem with how the tuba plays. I need to make sure that the solder goes all the way around the tubing, because if it does not, there will be a leak, and then it, that will affect how the tuba plays. Now I'm going to neutralize the flux so that the flux does not keep eating away at the lacquer. And this is a trombone spray bottle. I put one part ammonia in it, and then I put four parts water. So I'm going to spray that on all the solder joints. Then I'm going to wipe everything off, all the flux and the flux neutralizer. There are a few places where there's a little bit of extra solder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat and wipe the solder. I'm going to take a rag, heat up the solder joint, and then as soon as it melts I'm going to wipe off the excess solder. You have to be careful when you do this because you can burn yourself if you're not careful. But if you go over it really quickly and as soon as the solder melts you wipe it off you should be fine. But of course as with everything that involves heat and flame you need to be very careful and use all of the safety precautions. You also have to be sure that you have a fire extinguisher near whenever you use a flame. The last thing that I would do is check the lead pipe for leaks, and I would do that by pulling out the valve and the bottom valve cap. Then I would put my finger inside of the casing to block off the airflow. The problem with that is that this hole is large and it's oval, so I cannot block the airflow. What I'm going to do instead is pull out the first slide, and then push down the first valve and block off the tubing, and then I'm going to test it for leaks. This is going to look really weird, but I need to do this to check it out for leaks. So I'm pushing the first valve down, and then I'm, I'm pushing the first valve down. I'm going to cover up the tubing with my thumb. Then I'm going to blow on the receiver. Okay, there are no leaks. If there were leaks, I could feel air escaping when I blew on it, but I did not, so the job is done. I soldered on a tuba lead pipe, but the method is the same for baritones and euphoniums also. I hope that this video is helpful. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos and look in the description below for links to related videos.